there is a camera problem. Much whether we'll be able to hear from Ray Biffin. Ray was willing to uh, talk with us, but unfortunately um, uh, there is a camera problem and I don't think you want to see the type of pictures that would be coming up from it at the moment. But Bill, taken all in all, um, it is a problem for Port Melbourne with Allender out, hearing that discussion with Ted and uh, Rob, uh, because Allender was so mobile. He could play in the ruck and then they could swing him into centre-half forward if they required. Yes, well, we saw, the, uh, we saw the evidence of that in last year's grand final, didn't we, Phil, when he was off the ground for a while and they swung him back on and uh, he gave them the mobility that uh, they needed, uh, along with, on that occasion, Buster Harlan. Well, for Port Melbourne supporters, have you seen him play in, uh, in South Melbourne's side? No, I haven't, but I've, uh, our round-the-ground commentators at 3 w have told me, uh, told me a little bit about his two games, and they felt that he lacked pace, and I, I've subscribed to that too, Phil. I think that he lacks pace for uh, uh, the helter-skelter of league football at the moment, uh, but given time, and if he can quicken up over the summer months, I think he's a distinct prospect. Uh, but it's a big change, as you know. Yeah. It's a big, uh, quite a transition from one, one uh, standard to the other. Uh, speaking of the boys being unable to get into the uh, Dandenong room, uh, I had an interesting discussion with Mick Irwin this morning, the VFA coach, on when a coach should actually address the players. And Mick's got decided views on it, and he says he doesn't believe in pounding and pounding and pounding the gospel of football into a player's ears just X minutes before he runs out onto the well, ground. Well, they don't know before they run out on the ground, they never will. Well, Mick, Mick adopts the theory, and there's no secret about it. He adopts it that uh, he talks to them up to a certain period of time, say 25 minutes before the game starts, then allows them to... Uh, meditate as it were on what he's told them and when they go out onto the ground and you can recall it when they group together and have their final instruction amongst themselves right uh, well uh, let's take this break and then we'll be back to give you details on the ladder and matches being played today right uh, back here at uh, Port Melbourne there are some of the stalwarts who have probably followed uh, the boroughs for years and years uh, down here there's no doubt about it Port Melbourne definitely have a uh, big following and this crowd will build up considerably by the time the match starts. It shouldn't be very long before the umpires come out, but speaking about that, we have the Dandenong side. They're coming out on the ground already, led by their captain and coach, Ray Biffin. Uh, the boos to, from some of the uh, Port Melbourne supporters down here. But uh, the umpires are a little bit late probably in uh, coming out, but we'll uh, keep a camera out for them and uh, we should pick them up fairly soon but right now let's have a look at the first division ladder as it stands at the present time and there's port melbourne on top with only one defeat and sandringham doing an excellent job this year up in second position and uh, then we have preston just out by um, one game preston the boom team uh, really this year and uh, failed last week against frankston uh, nice to see uh, a bayside uh, team two of them up there in uh, the four, Frankston in fourth position after their good win against Preston last week, and then looking down the line to Caulfield, uh, down one game behind Geelong West. In the second division, the situation is that Camberwell uh, on top by one clear game, with the Sunshine yet to win a game. Uh, and look at that very, very poor percentage of uh, Sunshine, brought about with that de big defeat early in the season by Waverley. And now we have the umpires uh, coming out on the ground uh, for today. The field umpires, Murray Stapp, who's uh, been 11 years with the BFA and Brian Oakley, nine years. And uh, the ANA umpires, boundary umpires, Mike Stock, 16 years with the BFA, Frank Donnelly, four. Goal umpires, Willie Warman. Willie Warman, seven years with the BFA. And Bruce Bartlett, six. The emergency umpire is Mike Kennedy, three years. And the umpires... Board representative is former VFA umpire Noel Nobby O'Brien. Now Ted Henrys is back up with us and uh, Ted let's have a look at the teams as selected on Thursday night. First of all the home team in Port Melbourne. Well yes Phil there is one change in the Port Melbourne team. Uh, Paul Goss unfortunately has an injured thumb and cannot take his place in the side today. So coming in off the interchange bench will be Kavanagh. He'll be wearing Guernsey number 40 and in his place on the interchange bench will be Frank Johnson number 28. Of course Frank Johnson the son of the former uh, Port Melbourne and, uh, champion and BFA Liston Trophy winner also of the same name Frank Johnson. And then we have the Dandenong side as Ray Biffin walks across the ground. Just checking with some of his teammates, and there it is. Yes, Phil. Well, from the uh, Dandenong camp, they say there's no changes in the side, and the team will line up there as selected. And I'll be looking forward to see the uh, battle today between Ray Biffin and Fred Cook. It should be a beauty because both very experienced players. 
That half-back line of uh, Danny Long uh, doesn't greatly impress me when you see the fellow named Wallace, who was a good footballer, Phil, but to my opinion, he's a ruck rover type of player, but they've got him selected at centre-half back. Whether he'll play there or not is yet to be seen. But otherwise, it doesn't look a bad side, and uh, good to see Lou Wright playing with Danny Nong now. He was with the seconds earlier in the year, but now he's found his place in the uh, in the uh, Danny Nong side, the senior side. No doubt will be alternating the ruck with Dean Ross. Other matches being played in and around the Melbourne area today. Coburg at home to Brunswick, Paran at home to Preston, and Geelong at home to Frankston. As the Port Melbourne uh, side come out onto the ground, and today they were led out by Big Vic Annanson. In the second division game, Morty Alec at home to Werribee, Box Hill at home to Yarraville. Then we have Williamstown playing Waverley and Sunshine playing uh, Camberwell. Weather, well, it is overcast, of course. And uh, pretty gusty at the uh, present time, with the uh, cloud remaining uh, fairly high. The official weather forecast, cool and cloudy, rain clearing, gusty north to northwest winds, and the current temperature, not too bad, it's 17 degrees. Well, while the teams are warming up, we'll take this break and then be back for the toss. Well, Dandenong uh, uh, doing short sprints here. Unusual to see this happening before a game, Bill Jacobs. Most unusual. I hope that they were uh, thoroughly and completely warmed up before they did that. No doubt their phys, phys ed man would ensure that they were. Getting the feel of the ground. Yeah, well, uh, Ted just said getting the uh, feel of the ground, but uh, anyway, um, they'll need every, every feel of the ground if they're going to win this one today. Rob Asprey back up with us, Rob. You were talking about the umpires with us there off air a moment ago. Oh, yes, I was, actually. These are the two umpires who uh, Sandringham have laid a claim for uh, victimisation against uh, as regards David Pledger being reported on three occasions this, uh, this year. I should say the two umpires, they were involved in his last report. Yeah, well, they're now not invited into the Sandringham uh, rooms for uh, drinks or whatever after the match, which uh, I, I feel is a little bit hard to understand. Uh, I, I often think, Ted what's happening with the game of football. And when all said and done, it's a game, isn't it? It's a pity that, whether it's publicity or whether they're trying to do their best for David Pledger. Uh, but I was talking to Morris Dabb during the week and uh, they were refused admittance into the committee room, but uh, Peter Hogan invited them into the social club and uh, he spoke with them for about an hour. And, the, and uh, Morris Dabb was saying that Peter Hogan had no gripes at all. He was quite happy about the situation. Well, let's put Peter Hogan in, but uh, what are we going to say, Rob? Phil, during the week, I'm sure you'll want to mention this, at the Southern Cross, there was the farewell to Alex Gillen, which you compared. Maybe you'd like to make a comment well, about that. Uh, well, I, I thought it was a, uh, a great function. It was, and it? was a great tribute to uh, Alex Gillen, who's uh, been with the BFA for many years. And I, I thought Alex spoke particularly well. Um, uh, the way he handled it all and uh, the manner in which he handled it, I think, uh, endeared himself to everyone in the room. He's been uh, known as a controversial figure, and I, I liked his line, whether it was true or not, that he had six fool's cap pages and he had to edit them quickly when he saw the reaction to everyone in the, uh, in the Southern Cross. Yes, I, I think the VFA paid a, a, a tribute to a great man in, in football because he did so much for football uh, over the years. A pioneer. And, yes, and both he and his wife have been given an overseas trip by the VFA. That is something tangible. But Alec can take uh, with him in his uh, retirement uh, a lot of happy memories and thoughts of doing an excellent job and uh, bringing in a lot of new innovations into football. Phil, you've worked with him um, over a number of years uh, during the development of the VFA in television. Uh, was it a sad moment for you to see say farewell to Alex? It Gillen was a, uh, a very sad moment, but uh, of course, Rob, things do change as years go on and uh, those things have to be accepted. And I think Alec has accepted them in uh, his defeat as president in the right manner, uh, as I knew he would. And uh, his time had come. And uh, I, I had a great time with Alec over those years. Well, Port Melbourne uh, have won the toss and they've elected to kick to the northern end of the ground. And uh, we'll have Dandenong kicking towards the Williamstown Road end as umpire Brian Oakley comes in for the bounce of the ball. And here we go. And it was Ross, Dino Ross, getting the knockout from the ruck, but the pack immediately over the top of it. And uh, we see umpire Stab now coming in for the ball up. And the two big fellows go in, and it was in the back to Ross against Anderson, and Ross will get the free kick. While this fellow fires uh, for Dandenong, they've got a big chance, but he went out of the game very quickly against Preston. He shoots it straight up to Woodman, the... Um, 
centre half forward for Dandenong and Woodman has taken it out on the flank. Playing it across right into the right forward pocket. Glenn Townsend, the full forward, crept into that position to take the mark. So Townsend on a very, very acute angle at the Williamstown Road end of the ground. He looked back upfield then. He was getting a lead from uh, Peter Tonks, who was listed to play in the back pocket. But down there on the forward line, there's the kick on its way, and it's the minor score of the behind, one minute after the commencement of play, to Dandenong. So they're first to score. As we have Peter Hall now getting ready for Port Melbourne to take the kickoff, and a quiet opening to the game here today. I wonder what Bill Jacobs mightn't be uh, wrong here. He didn't select Dandenong, but by gee, he was uh, a little bit apprehensive. All right, it's passed out now towards Swan of uh, Port Melbourne, and Swan plays it back in towards the centre of the ground. Players waiting under it. Grant O'Reilly is the player in there, usually a reliable mark. A uh, push in the back, and the free kick will be taken by Christo. So Christo from out on the flank position, sends it across towards Cook at centre half forward. Punched away uh, from Cook by Biffin. Biffin immediately going back to the full back position. As uh, going down to the ground this time is Peter Wilkinson of Port Melbourne, and uh, he'll get the free kick. So Wilkinson now. He's not even within scoring range. He's got the wind behind him. He needs to go for the long kick instead of the pass. It's not a long kick. And up they fly for it. Biffin gets it down to ground. Dino Ross pushes it wide into the pocket. And here's the opportunity for Dandenong to clear. And immediately taken away this time by Madden. Madden.